437,237 people. That's right, 437,237 people. That's the number of registered voters in the city of Philadelphia who will not be able to vote under the new Pennsylvania voter suppression ID law because they don't have the right kind of ID. 437,237 people in one city. Because most of them, like me, live in a big city that's got decent public transportation and don't own a car, like I don't own a car. Daniel Helper is here with us. He's the deputy online editor at the Weekly Standard. Daniel, welcome to the program. Tom, thanks for having me. So why would anybody defend these voter suppression laws when it's so clear that what they are designed to do is prevent students, elderly people, and and people who live in big cities or who are poor from voting? It's like this. You know, last month, er Attorney General Eric Holder addressed the NAACP, and he brought up this very subject. He brought up the voter ID laws, and he said that the Justice Department is taking actions against these laws that he considers uh, bad, and that's obviously the Obama administration is against. So they're taking, uh, I think, from 10 states, they're taking it on. But here's the thing. In order to get in to see Eric Holder and see Eric Holder give a speech, those people who were attending the NAACP convention had to show uh, identification in order to get into the hall. Why do they have to show identification? Well, it's pretty obvious. You know, you want the people who are supposed to be there to be able to get in the hall, and you don't want people who aren't supposed to be there to get in the hall. I think the same reasoning works for voting. Why do you want, why do you want uh, people to have to check their voter IDs? For the very simple reason that you only want people voting who are registered and who are eligible and who are legally allowed to vote. And you only want them voting. Daniel, once. you have to show ID to, 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 you know, you have to show ID to get on an airplane. There's a lot of things you have to show ID to do. But yeah. I would submit you to you, to you that you poor know. people, poor, genuinely poor people, are not showing up at the NAACP meeting with their ID in their hand. Elderly people who, who are confined to their homes are not showing up at the NAACP meeting with ID in their hands. Students who, are, who live some distance away and are going to college are not showing up at the NAACP meeting with ID in their hands. And, and it, it, it's, it's an absolute false equivalence. This is voter suppression, pure and simple. It, we should be looking at this on a cost-benefit basis. You had last year, 35 people were arrested in the United States for voting illegally. In most cases, it was somebody voting on behalf of their spouse. A couple of them had Alzheimer's. A few of them were divorced, and they just didn't like their spouse's politics. And, and a couple of them were felons. I mean, there, 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 there wasn't a single illegal immigrant in the, in the crowd. These, those people are not even showing up. It's not and, about, it's and, not about and, and, and thir- there was 35 people last year. 36 were killed by, dro- by televisions falling on them last year. And, and you're going to knock 437,000 people off the rolls in just one city. In order to stop the maybe one or two people in that city who are going to vote illegally, that seems to me insane. You're, you're making a logical fallacy. You're saying because you don't like the solution that there isn't a problem. They're two separate things. I think I'm saying both. both. I'm saying there is no problem, and this is not the solution to this problem. This is the solution to the fact that Barack Obama won Philadelphia by about 200,000 votes. If you knock 400,000 largely Obama voters off the rolls, suddenly Mitt Romney, yeah, let's uh, you know get get uh, Pennsylvania done. Did you know? Did you know that 70 percent of Americans say voter ID laws are needed to stop illegal voting? That's because 70% of Americans have been listening to you guys hallucinate on the air, particularly over at Fox News, for the last decade. Paul Weyrich laid this thing out as a strategy back in 1980. Everybody thought he was a crackpot when he said it. Here's what he had. Here's what the guy who was running the, helping run the Reagan campaign and founded the American Legislative Exchange Council, which wrote these laws, which wrote this law for Pennsylvania. Here's what he had to say in 1980. Now, many of our Christians have what I call the goo-goo syndrome. Good government. They want everybody to vote. I don't want everybody to vote. Elections are not won by a majority of people. They never have been from the beginning of our country, and they are not now. As a matter of fact, our leverage in the elections, quite candidly, goes up as the voting populace goes down. This has been the Republican strategy since 1980, and it's taken them, you know, it took them 20 years to actually start putting it into law, but they're doing it. Tom, this is pure and simple crazy talk. One no, second. this that's the founder 70%, of Alec. One second, one second. Seventy percent of Americans believe that there's a problem. Fifty-two percent of Democrats 
think that they're out that 34 percent of americans wait, daniel believe wait, in flying saucers wait, wait, does that mean we should be all wearing tinfoil hats let, let, let me finish my my thought um the the point being that there there is a serious crisis in the legitimacy of the system right so i think i think there's solutions that are other than I think that there's a variety of solutions that can be entertained to this so that we don't have a crisis in the system where people don't believe in, the, in that the system is correct. Yeah, and you fair. guys stop, stop fear-mongering it. That's not the issue. The issue... That That's what's are, causing there are this. Laws on the books. There are laws on the books, and I don't know, I'm not uh, familiar with, with, uh, with every law on the book, but what they can do is, is, and what you might be happy with, is instead of charging for voter IDs, that they can just give them out with partisan registration, that there's various ways in which to make it easier to obtain one and yet still have the legitimacy and of the system intact. And I think that's... The legitimacy the of the here. system is just fine, Daniel, but George W. Bush that's, spent $74 million you're, you're and had 93 federal order. prosecutors spend seven years looking for criminals voting. And what did he come up with? Ann Coulter and Mitt Romney. You're, you're in the minority here. Seventy percent of Americans believe that there's a problem. And the fact that so many Americans believe that there's a problem is a problem in and of itself. You want legitimacy in the system. You want people to think that the, when the election is over, what you done, are, that, 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 if that's, that if that, that number that, is that, correct, that, that, that 70 percent of Americans are concerned about the legitimacy of our elections, I would submit to you, A, I, I would love to see how the question was phrased, because I'll bet that 70 percent of Americans are concerned about the legitimacy of voting machines. I can send it to you, but it doesn't matter if it's 30 percent. Okay, is that, there's, is that people that who are concerned about people. voting machines, or is that people who are concerned about some illegal who is going to vote. I, I'm not, I don't have the question in front of me. I only have the, the numbers. Okay, because I can tell you a lot of people are very concerned about the fact that, that you know, uh, in, 19, in 2002, George Bush signed legislation, the Help America Vote Act, that, that gave $6 billion to the states to outsource the most critical part of our commons, our vote, to private for-profit corporations that at that, at that time were 100% held by Republican-leaning CEOs. But the voting process, and, and that's a fine point, the voting process is is such that if there is doubt, as you're raising, though I don't think your points are, are legitimate, to be clear, but, if the, but the point being, if there are such widespread doubts, they need to be addressed otherwise. Right. Let's get rid of the voting machines. You can't just, Let's go back to voting okay. on paper. Okay, th that's perhaps one idea, but that's not the question that we're talking about. We're talking about voter ID. Well, if you're I'm concerned, if people are concerned about the legitimacy of our elections, I would submit to you that the the big concern, at least among anybody who's serious, you know, who has voted and knows that you have to sign in, you have, your signature has to match. When you register, you have to, have, in some way, demonstrate that you are here. That that those people who vote know that the problem isn't, you know, gee, uh, you know, uh, Jose who snuck in from from Costa Rica is trying to vote. You know, he's he's hiding. Uh, it's it's instead that you know we're voting on machines that are that are owned by private corporations that refuse to tell us how they're tabulating our votes. So, so there are various there are various uh, questions about the voting process. The one that we're talking about today, I thought was. But the, throwing four hundred and thirty seven thousand people off the voting rolls in one city is no solution, Danny. I, I agree. Nobody should be thrown off. It, nobody should be, should be thrown off. But there must be something. But they are that, being. That should be, you're not listening. There must be something that should be done. In order to ensure the legitimacy of the voting process, if you're concerned about the legitimacy, if you're concerned about people illegally voting, put them in jail. You know, when somebody like Mitt Romney doesn't even own a home in Massachusetts, but votes in Massachusetts, put him in jail. The, the law should. I'm not putting anyone in jail. I'm just saying that that from a theoretical perspective, the law should be enacted and should be upheld in all in all forms. And if you can't be in every state upheld, in the union, it's a felony to illegally taken. vote. Yes, the measure should be taken to enforce those laws. I'm with you. Okay. We agree. This Dan Daniel Halper, the deputy state. online editor at the Weekly Standard. Um, the website, Daniel, is weeklystandard.com, weekly of course. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you.